Amen. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Okay, we're going to continue our lesson on prosperity. We have about, I think, three or four more lessons. And then we're going to start a new series. I wonder what it's going to be. Whatever it is, it's going to be good. Amen. But I hope you all are enjoying this series on prosperity. Prosperity is part of the Christian life. Amen. You know, Jesus taught on prosperity. He talked about prosperity. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for this day. Thank you for your anointing that's here. Thank you for your presence. Open our eyes that we may see our ears to hear and our hearts to receive your word. Let the word that go forth may it land on good ground and may it bring forth fruit to perfection so that we may be perfect in you, lacking nothing for our destiny. We bind the thief that comes to steal the word in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to guard the word of God in our hearts for out of it are the issues of life. Amen. We love you. Do you love him? You've got to love him. Life is about loving Jesus. There's no other reason why you should be living. <laughs> Life is about loving Jesus. Amen. Okay, so today I want to talk to you about uh, security. Security is uh, one of the seven streams of wealth. You know, there are seven streams of wealth. Securities is actually the number one. Number one, security. Why is security important? Because you can, you can have so much money in this world, but if, if it's not secure, it's not secure, you can lose it all. You can lose it all in a heartbeat. <laughs> you can lose it all, and it happens. So security, not only is security wealth in itself, when you can, but also security can be monetized to produce wealth. Security is wealth in itself, and security can be monetized to produce wealth. Amen. So that's uh, that's what I wanted to talk about today: security. Of course, the number one security that you need to have is is your spiritual security, security in God. God told Abraham, I am your shield. Hallelujah. I am your shield. Would you like God to be your shield? I am your shield. All throughout the Bible, the Bible talks about security. In Genesis 1, 28, it says, And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And then it says, Subdue. Subdue is security. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy and he's still in the business of stealing, killing, and destroying. But if you can be wise, if you can be wise and secure the wealth that God has given you, secure the things that God has given you, even your salvation needs security. 
You know, there is ways to secure your salvation. Hallelujah. There are things you can do to secure your salvation. Remember the uh, parable of the sower? You must secure your salvation. Because, you know, you can lose it. You can lose your salvation. But there are things you can do to secure it. You know, when we talk about prosperity, we're not just talking about monetary gain, but spiritual gain is also important. When you go to Matthew 13, Matthew 13. Jesus, we love you. Okay, the parable of the sower. The parable of the sower is from verse 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not, watch what it says. It says, Then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. Remember, Proverbs says to guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. The issues of life are the Word of God. If you read in the verses before that verse, you notice it's talking about the Word of God. It's talking about the Word of God. Amen. You can increase your volume. It's talking about the Word of God. So we need to guard our heart. So how do you secure your salvation? Number one, you need to be um, rooted in the Word. The Word Hallelujah. And then in verse 20, it says, But he that received the seed into the stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. So they're saved, right? They receive it with joy. Yet he hath no root in himself. But dareth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution arise because of the word, by and by he's offended. Offense. You know, you can lose your salvation because of offense. There are Christians in hell today because they're, they were offended. And they didn't want to forgive. This is serious. They didn't want to forgive. And Jesus clearly states that if you do not forgive other people, God will not forgive you. If we're not forgiven of our sins, how can we make it to heaven? See, there are things you can do to secure your salvation. One of them, be rooted in love. What is love? Love is quick to forgive. Love covers a multitude of sin. If you can love people, love God and love people, you can secure your salvation. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So you see, it says here they were offended. They were offended. Then it goes on to say, um, verse 22, He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, the care of this world, the deceivingness of riches, choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. You know, the scripture tells us that Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. Without him, we can bear no fruit. So we need to be connected to Jesus, rooted in, in him. And then verse 23, And he that received the seed in the good ground is he that heareth the word and understand it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. So the number one security you need is spiritual security. In addition, so you see in Genesis it says, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue. So security is important. Now, when we talk about uh, monetary security, Remember, security in itself is wealth. One of the best ways for you to secure wealth is through having a trust fund. Trust fund. You know, a lot of people don't know about trust funds, especially the average person. The average person. But one day I, I was, uh, I had a dream and in the dream, I was sp speaking to a man of God, I believe it was Jesus, and he was telling me to do the two things that wealthy people do. Two things that wealthy people do. The reason why they're wealthy. So number one, when they get money, they buy property. Buy property. And the second thing is they buy, they put the property in the trust. You got to protect your wealth. You got to protect your wealth. So security is a stream of wealth. There are so many different types of security. There's a, uh, for example, you go to the store, right? You can buy some five dollars, <laughs> and they'll tell you, "Do you want? Do you want warranty with that?" <laughs> five dollars. This is five dollars. Is if anything happens to this, <laughs> I'll just buy another one. <laughs> they want to give you a warranty for everything. Why? Because they know that security is a stream of wealth. People want protection, even for the silliest things. <laughs> they want protection. <laughs> Hallelujah. So warranty is a type of security. There's uh, auto insurance. There's house insurance there's an insurance of all kinds right life insurance you name it these are all forms of security and these companies are making money but also they're giving you something of value which is what security security is prosperity. Security is prosperity. D 
Do you know you can um, you can start off being a good Christian, but have a bad ending? There's so there are many characters in the Bible. And it's very sad. Every time I think about it, it's sad. They started off well, but they ended well. They ended bad. They, they start off well, but they ended poorly. In the end, they left God. One of them was King Saul. King Saul. In the book of uh, 1 Samuel. King Saul, the Bible says, in his beginning days, he was very humble. He was very humble. Humble in his own, own eyes. But in the end, he became proud. And the Bible says that God rejected him. God rejected him. We don't want God to reject us. The Bible says God resists the proud. Pride is the number one sin. That's the first sin that ever existed. Lucifer. Lucifer got thrown out of heaven because of pride. Pride. So if you want to secure your salvation, be humble. There are many things that can take people to hell. It's not just believing in Jesus. No, you you must secure your salvation. Don't be naive. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So you must be wise. You must be wise. Not just like a serpent, but like many other animals, there's wisdom in. You must be wise. The Bible talks about the conies. The conies, or um, they they look like a, a rabbit. What's what's a modern word for the conies? They um they dig holes. <clears throat> the conies, they live they live by the rock. The wisdom of the conies. Jesus talked about the wisdom of the conies. Also called uh Hyrax. Uh, there's a word that I'm looking for. They're they're they look like rabbits. Let me give you the uh the synonym. Let's go to that uh this Proverbs. Proverbs 31. <clears throat> Jesus talked about securing your salvation. We're talking about prosperity. Proverbs Uh, it's 30, actually. Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30. You know, there's, there's, there's wisdom in different animals. You, you must study animals. If you want to learn about wisdom, study different animals. So here we see in Proverbs 30, 
God speaks of four animals that are very wise. Serpents are not the only wise animals. A serpent is wise in regards to uh, camouflaging, hiding. A serpent is a good uh, hider. <laughs> it hides. It's sneaky. Proverbs 30 from verse 24 it says Proverbs 30 verse 24 there be four things which are little upon the earth but they are exceeding wise exceeding wise so here's the wisdom number one it talks about the ant the ants are people not strong yet they prepare their meat in the summer so preparation is important to learn to prepare the conies verse 26 the conies are but a feeble folk yet make they their houses in the rocks they make their houses in the rocks and you know the the lord talked about building your house on the rock they make their house in the rocks why because when when uh when the wind is blowing when it's raining uh if it's too hot they have protection what is protection security you can secure your salvation security so jesus uh gave this illustration of building a house in uh, Matthew Matthew 7 then uh, we're rounding up Matthew 7 Jesus said here's how you secure your salvation talk about prosperity right what what is the point of gaining the whole world Jesus said you make all the money in the world and you lose your soul what, what wisdom is that? So when we talk about prosperity, we need to also deal with your spirit, your soul, your salvation. That's the number one prosperity, in addition to monetary prosperity. Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 24, Well, let me read a, ver a few verses before that. Verse 21, Matthew 7, verse 21. Listen to this. Every time I read this, this is kind of like, this is the fear of God. You know, this, this puts the fear of God in me when I read this. From verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Then he continues to say, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Remember the wisdom of the conies? They build their house by rocks. Why? Because of security. And the rain descended 
and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock that's security that's prosperity security is prosperity security is prosperity is actually the number one prosperity the number one form of wealth is security because you can gain and if it's not secure it can be lost then verse 26 and everyone that heareth these saying of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and it beat upon the house and it fell and great was the fall of it security is prosperity so you see if you want to secure your salvation just do what Jesus says just be obedient if the Lord says forgive you need to forgive if you say I'm not going to forgive what do you think is going to happen in the end? Do you think the Lord will change his mind in what he says that if you don't forgive that your Heavenly Father will not forgive you? So you must secure your salvation by being obedient to Jesus. And then in addition, you can secure your wealth too. Secure your wealth with trust and so forth okay well um, I'm going to stop here there are so many there are so many different types of uh, security even national security you know military bodyguard that's another form of security cyber security home security legal protection social security <laughs> right the government program there's all kinds of security so security is prosperity and people know that that's why they offer it to you it's a win-win they give you something of value and they also gain Hallelujah. We have the Lord who also gives us security. Psalm 91. I just feel like reading Psalm 91. We'll close with Psalm 91. Because of what's happening today, there's so many people that's worried in life. Aside from your salvation, when I say salvation, I mean you go into heaven. But also, God also secures you on earth. He secures you on earth. He, there's security in God. Psalm 91, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. That's prosperity. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noising pestilence. You see, that's all, all the, the diseases. Pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler shield that's prosperity thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction 
that wasteth at noonday, a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Oh, hallelujah. Is anybody thankful for God's security? We're talking about prosperity. This is the most important prosperity ever. It's for you to be secure. If you lose your life, well, who's going to spend that money? Someone else. So you see, security is number one. The number one prosperity is security. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold the sea, and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. You see that? No plague will come near you. Hallelujah. We're secure in the Lord. That's part of our prosperity, security. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, and young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. You see that? All you got to do is love the Lord. Love him. It says, because he hath set his love upon me. Because you love the Lord, it says, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. See that? That's prosperity. Salvation is prosperity. Security is prosperity. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I want to pray for you. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. I want to pray that God heal you. If you're sick today, would you lay your hands wherever you feel the pain? First thing you need to do is forgive. All forgiveness is a hindrance to healing. It blocks it blocks you from being healed. So move that mountain. Mark eleven twenty three. Move the mountain of unforgiveness. I'm gonna give you a moment and then I'm gonna pray for you. Okay, I want you to lay your hands wherever you feel the pain. And in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I command that sickness to leave your body. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Those that want to lose weight, I want to pray for you, for God to supernaturally take that weight off of your body. You know God can do it. All you got to do is believe. I'm telling you, I was instructed by God to pray for people to lose weight. And God can do it. Lord, I pray for those that are watching. I command that weight. I command that weight to come off of your body now. I command those pounds to, to come off of your body. In the name of Jesus. 
Holy Spirit, I love you. Whatever you need from God, you know, there's ministering angels. I'm just going to release the ministering angels. You talk to the Lord, whatever you need, healing, deliverance, financial breakthrough, whatever you need. Ministering angels are being released now. Lord, release your angels. Release your angel of prosperity, angel of breakthrough. Release your angels, Lord, to minister to your people. Angel, hallelujah. May they receive your joy and laughter. In the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you. Amen. Okay, children of God, I want to encourage you, if you haven't already, go grab a hold of this book. It's the best book in the world. Face-to-face -face appearance from Jesus. You want to see Jesus? All you got to do is read this book. It's also available on audio. This book was written by my spiritual father, David E. Taylor. As he was writing this book, Jesus appeared to him and told him, everyone that reads this book, I will appear to them. And that's what's happening. All over the world, people are seeing Jesus by reading this book. I saw the Lord. Hey, man, I'm so excited. Every time I talk about this, I get excited. You can see Jesus. You guys, this is big. <laughs> Go get this book, joshuamediaministries.org. And then, The Heart. My goodness, you want to know about paying the price? You need to read this book, The Heart, The Currency of Heaven. There are different types of heart in, in the Bible. And these hearts are all currencies. And you can use these hearts, hearts of love, hearts of humility, hearts of meekness. You can use this heart to buy from the Lord. The Lord wants you to buy from him. Revelation 3.18. Revelation 3.18. Buy of me. Go try it in the fire. No, everything is not free. People want, people want free, <laughs> free things. Even your salvation wasn't free. You know, you were bought with a price. You know, Jesus paid very expensive to buy you, to buy your salvation. Victory over pride, triumph and humility. Go grab a hold of this book. This book is going to bless you. Pride is dangerous. Get rid of it before it gets rid of you. And don't be the one that say, oh, I don't have any pride. No, there are different types of pride. You might be humble in one area, but be proud in another area. You know, you can have what's called a family pride or pride of race. The people of pride of race or, or pride of beauty or pride of money. That's pride of pace. Oh my goodness, there's so many different types of pride. That's why I love this book. It changed my life. Thank you, Jesus. This is a great book. And so there's so many other great books. You just need to go to joshuamediaministries.org. Go to the bookstore and just buy up everything. <laughs> Invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. Amen. Okay. You guys, I want to encourage you. Uh, come and fellowship come and fellowship uh, with us Sundays at 3.30 p.m. we are at 14565 Valley View Avenue Unit A Santa Fe Springs California 90670 and on Saturdays we are at Cal UMS the address there is 1126 North Brokehurst Street, Suite 207, Anaheim, California, 92801. That's at 3 p.m. And then Monday and Wednesdays, we have our Zoom Bible study at 6 o'clock. 6.30, we go live on YouTube. Also, we have our prayer line that's available. It's open from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. And that is... Uh, Pacific Standard Time, California time. And uh, we are, right now we are praying for the election and for Trump to be in office. 
if you are a Christian, you need to vote for Trump. You need to vote for Trump. Trump is God's chosen vessel for us to have four more years of uh, prosperity. Amen. If you don't believe me, I want you to go and pray. You need to go and pray. And God will show you. The body of Christ should not be divided. Amen. Okay. Um, we are done. I want you to let us remember to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength. May we love him more today than we did yesterday. And may we love people the way Jesus loves us. Until next time, God bless you, love you. Bye-bye.